Hi everybody, welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, Homestead in the Desert. Here we are, another day, a Monday, the 16th of September, 2019. Alright, we're starting here in the uh, battery room because uh, I promised uh, one of my subscribers that I would uh, show the specs on my, my power jack here. And uh, this is the uh, 8,000 watt low frequency pure sine wave power inverter okay that's got a 120 amp battery charger built right into it all right so the model number is lfpsw which is low frequency pure sine wave 8,000-120 amp. All right. And uh, this is uh, from, let me see if I can turn this camera over so you can get a good look at the website. www.inverters888.com or something. Inverter888.com. I'm reading it upside down through the camera. All right, so on this side, on this end, I should say, there's four connectors for your battery cables in. Okay, so now that's because this is a split phase system, um, inverter, and that, that allows me to pump. Uh, 240 volts out instead of just 120. Okay, so what I did was I just jumped across those with some number six wire, but I've got my heavy duty here, my 600 volt cable, uh, two watt wires coming from the battery to the inverter. That's where you want heavy wire is going to your load, okay? So on this side of it, there's a connector for line one, neutral, and line two. Okay, line one is 120 volts, line two is 120 volts, and of course the neutral is the neutral. So that gives you, they, they call it 220 volts, which is the old version of electricity. Everything is 240 now, but it used to be, uh, yeah, it says 220, 240. So it used to be everything was, uh, 110 220 but now everything's been upgraded to 120 240 okay so this has a, a power save switch on it and an off switch so you can shut it off here and you you disconnect this away from your uh, electrical panel you disconnect all load coming off of it all right now i used two number sixes because there was room for them on the connectors here Two number sixes for line one, two number sixes for line two, and two number sixes for the neutral. And that goes into my uh, breaker panel, and that ties to the individual separate bus bars. So I have 240 volts at my, uh, my electrical panel. So I can run 240 volt uh, things like uh, air compressors, things like that of this. Uh, most of my stuff runs 120 or 140. I'm 120 or 240, so uh, that's where I set this up for. Now there's two fuses on this thing. There's one right here, and there's another one right there. Okay, so those those fuses will uh, pop if there's a problem with your system. I've never had a problem with that. Okay, this input right here, line, neutral, and E whatever the heck he is but um, that's for 120 volt input so you, if you had this grid tied at your house and you had uh, power coming in on power lines you could connect a um, extension cord type plug on there and then you would be able to plug that into your regular um, AC outlet at your house so when your solar's not working at night this thing turns into a battery charger and charges your battery banks uh, back up. So you wouldn't have to run solar in the city if you were uh, um, grid tied. 
So this is the grid tie inverter, pure sine wave, very important, pure sine wave. Don't get the uh, modified sine wave, you'll burn up everything that you plug into it, including freezers and uh, box fans, you name it, it it'll burn them up. So, all right, so you can see the ground wires down here. And those come off of a ground lug on the other side here. So this unit is grounded to earth ground, not to your battery ground, to your earth ground. All right. Got some good voltage coming in right there. Of course, that's just charging that one battery right now. That's a Harbor Freight 100 watt solar panel set that's outside here. And uh, all my other stuff is at, at peak right now. So they're full, full charged battery bank ready to go into the evening. And I'm um, getting uh, some wind power here. It's been windy all day. So as you can see, this is the watts, uh, the output watts that I'm getting right now. And uh, yeah, the batteries are at 12.8 and uh, 68 amps peak. Uh, that's volt max, that's watt hours, that's amps peak, that's watts peak. Okay, so that's what I've been getting here, and I uh, wanted to cover that first. All right, like I said, it's windy, and that's because there's a storm across the valley. Okay, when I got up this morning, it was calm, it was cool, it was overcast like this, and it was raining right over that area. So I said, well, what a great day to get up on a roof. It's not too hot. Now over there, it has been raining all day long. It looks like they're finally getting a break from it now. But uh, all of this storm heads and stuff, we're all heading that way. And you see they're right over me. So I wanted to try to get the, uh, some work done on the roof up here because it was so cool and calm today. So I did that and I'm gonna show you. I left my ladder here and it's tied off up there so it won't blow over, but um, it does move a little bit and I'm going up the ladder and I uh, gotta always keep three points connected to your ladder when you're climbing. So that's why I stop each step and make sure I have two feet and one hand on. All right, so this is what I did. I got out my big bucket of plastic roof cement here and I sealed all of the seams on the OSB here on the roof and all of the nail holes because that breaks the, uh, the, the surface of the um, OSB, which is oriented strand board, for those of you who don't know what an OSB is. And uh, when you break that, that surface, the water doesn't want to roll off of it. It wants to go down inside of it. So I made sure all the nail holes or all the nail heads were covered over. All the seams are all dressed in and the seam between the uh, metal container and the, the roof are all sealed in. So now when I, when I come back and I put my roofing on, this seam right here will be where the, um, the roll paper, the 80 pound roll paper will end, okay? And then uh, down the line, I'll be um, coating the roof of this whole thing all the way from the orange container across the, uh, the new roll roofing and right down onto this container is all gonna be coated with um, Tropicool uh, pure silicone roof sealant. And then I'll put my solar panel panels up here to so where I'll have uh, a nice display and they'll be raised up off the roof so that I still have water flow. Now, over here, you notice I moved my outdoor shower right here up against the container. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get a gutter on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm thinking is I'm going to put a diverter, uh, which is just an angle piece, a piece of angle metal along there and coming up this side of the, the container, make an L bend on it. And it'll go over and it'll drop off at the where the, the gutter starts over there. So the water that's running on this edge of the roof will hit the diverter and be diverted over to the gutter and won't go down inside the shower. And then I started thinking, well, 
I might even do that all the way around on the edges here so that no water runs off the edges. It all goes down to the gutter. So, I don't know, might be an option. All right, another thing I gotta do is when I'm putting the roofing on, I'm gonna take some small pieces of the 80 pound mineral, mineral roll and I'm gonna seal the tops of these. And that's because there's an opening going that way and on the inside I have a, a board going against there, but water can still get down inside here, go through that opening and then come down inside the wall. So I'm gonna seal off the top of it so that doesn't happen. And when I do that, that's gonna leave an opening on this side of each one of these, and there's a total of eight of them. There's four on each container. So there's gonna be four new birdhouses on uh, the corners of my container here for the birds to live in. Cool, huh? So that's what I did today. And uh, then the winds came up, so I had to get down off the roof so I didn't get blown off. And I decided I wasn't gonna try to handle uh, gutters in the wind because they do have sharp edges on them and a good slip with a good gust of wind could cause one nasty cut. Even wearing gloves, it'll go right through the gloves. But what I did do was I got everything set up out here. I've got four pieces of gutter, uh, 10 feet long each. That's 40 feet total. I've got my couplers here and I already put one on this one. I've got the board here. And if you remember when I was doing the gutter up there, I told everybody a, a tip to keeping the gutter straight when you're working to get these things up in place is to clamp a board like this half and half from one gutter to the other and just use clamps on that to hold that in place. I like putting them on this side so that I can still work on the other side for attachment and it's not in my way and the clamps will, will hold this thing from wanting to flex at the joint. So that's a, that fly's been bugging me. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna start it up there just on this side of that opening on the hole and uh, work it uh, all the way along that top seam and I'll be dropping about an eighth inch uh, per foot. Maybe, yeah, I, I don't even have to go that much, but I'd probably go about, uh, oh, a quarter of an inch over the 10 foot length, drop down towards this direction and it'll take um, three pieces to come right over the top of these containers and then one piece go from the shower bottles over to right over the containers. And then I've got my downspout, which I'll cut into that. And on this one, I'm gonna do a first flush system and I'll show you how I do that. Um, basically, it's gonna be done with some uh, PVC pipe and uh, what it does is uh, when the water cut starts coming off in the rain, there's a lot of dirt, bird poop, and all kinds of stuff on top of the container. And I don't want that ending up inside of these because it's a pain in the neck to clean them out because you're gonna get all that sediment in there. So we're gonna try to uh, avoid most of it that comes in. And so what's gonna happen is the water is gonna come in and come out my downspout, and then there'll be a straight pipe dropping nine feet or eight feet down almost to the ground here and at the bottom there'll be a small valve that I can open and close and I'll leave it up high enough so I can slip a five gallon pail under there and uh, catch the runoff later. So inside of that pipe there'll be a float device and that normally the float device would be down here at the bottom of the pipe. Then as it starts filling up with water the float de device is going to rise up and once it gets up to a Y that I'm gonna have in the connector, then the at that point, it can't go up any higher because there'll be a ring inside of there, like a stopper. So this thing is gonna go up and block that stopper so water can't go straight down anymore. So it's gonna be deflected in the Y going this way. And that'll come over and go into the uh, first container here. I'll also have a screen filtration system built into that unit. So anything that does get past it, uh, something that blows on top of the roof suddenly and then gets washed down, anything that does get on top of it will come down into the screen and then I'll be able to pull the screen out and 
dump that extra debris out. So it'd just be a, a basic sediment filter to keep any junk from getting into my, uh, my totes here, my storage tanks. All right, that's all there is to it today, people. Time for a cold one. Pot roast last night was delicious. I'm gonna have some again tonight. And uh, we'll be seeing you all soon, like maybe tomorrow even. G-Bear, reminding you, don't forget to give me a thumbs up there. Please subscribe. There's still 53% of you viewers out there that aren't subscribed. It's not gonna hurt you to subscribe. You're not gonna get harassed, um, internet uh, problems and anything like that. All you're gonna do is get to see my videos. So please subscribe. I can use the subscribers, really can. G-Bear, signing off.